Try Life is an international series showcasing the very best of triathlon action from across the Asia Pacific region. Whether it's running, swimming or cycling, triathlon is as much a lifestyle as it is a sport. And it's a global phenomenon drawing participants from all walks of life. From Iron Kids to ITU, to 70.3 to Ironman, welcome to the exciting and inspiring world of Try Life. Today on Try Life, our world exclusive, Ironman champion Pete Jacobs opens up for the first time about his emotional journey and the missing years. We meet a celebrity superstar who credits Ironman for his own salvation. Then there's the inspirational journey of Taria Pitt, who personifies the very essence of anything is possible. Finally, we head out back for a triathlon unlike any other on the planet. In 2012, Pete Jacobs joined one of world sport's most exclusive clubs, becoming just the 17th man and only the fourth Australian to win triathlon's holy grail, the Hawaiian Ironman. After 8 hours, 37 minutes and 18 seconds on the gruelling Kona course, Pete ran into history. Along with line honours came the coveted world title. But soon after reaching the heights of his career, his life spiralled out of control and what happened next would be a race for survival. As a teen, Jacobs had experienced inexplicable bouts of fatigue. After Hawaii, they crippled him. Since 2012, instead of just having a day or a week feeling fatigue when I pushed it too hard in training, it became you know, a couple of months where I would just feel exhausted and not be able to think or train or do anything really enjoyable. I was really you know, just so down, but it's just exhaustion. It got seriously bad and uh, became an a issue more about how do I get through it for my health, not just how do I get through it for my career. You know, how do I enjoy life? without just feeling uh, you know, really exhausted all the time. Six years earlier, Jacob's biggest win, marrying Jamie. For Jamie, it was devastating to see PJ, usually so full of life and bravado, turning his back on everything that had once brought him joy. Watching him sometimes being too tired to get out of bed, um, too tired to hold a decent conversation with me. Emotionally, I was really um, struggling watching the love of my life not being able to connect with him because he, he just was so fatigued all the time. It was like living with an 80-year-old. For Jacobs, every training session became a private hell. Prior to 2012, he'd been able to manage his bouts of fatigue. Now they were out of control. He wondered if it was age, maybe a body meltdown after so many thousands of hours of training. Publicly, he stunned the triathlon world when he started pulling out of races, including Kona in 2015. Winning Hawaii is the same as winning any race. You still want to be better at the next one. Uh, so it didn't really change me mentally at all. It was still, well, okay, I want to be better at the next one. So nothing really changed. Um, and it was purely just that physical exhaustion. Um, and people questioned if it was mental and uh, my motivation and that sort of thing. Jacobs is used to running solo, but this journey was tougher than any race. And the quiet innuendo that the Ironman champ had lost it became the hardest part. It was incredibly frustrating to have 
literally everybody question if it was mental or physical. And you know, I've been dealing with this since I was a teenager, having days where I would feel just exhausted out of nowhere. So, you know, I knew exactly the feeling. It wasn't a foreign feeling, and um, but it just was a lot worse. It's been a real, um, a big learning curve for me because I, I started to think maybe it was in his head. It was really tough for Jamie to understand it as well, just being tired for so long at a time and seeing you know all these other athletes just put their head down and do it even if they were tired they'd still get out there and train but it's a different sort of fatigue so there were times when she would sort of frustrate me and say why don't you just get out there and is it is it mental they train when they're tired why don't you train when you're tired he saw endless doctors, he tried endless amounts of things. We were flying down seeing a doctor once every two weeks in Melbourne at one stage for four months. But then that all led to him learning how his body works and how to meditate the problem and how to put oxygen back in, the, in his blood cells and his body to come alive again. She has always been supportive and, and was the key in the end to helping me get my health back. Found out you know, what foods are inflammatory and that's probably been my issue and I've never felt better. Um, so yeah, after finding an answer to my health and my life, um, you know, it's allowed me to get back on track with my career as well. For me, since uh, the start of this year, I haven't eaten any meat with feet. You know, I still have a little bit of fish and I eat eggs every day but basically uh, eat a lot more leafy greens, a lot more seeds, a lot more nuts, a lot more legumes. Um, so plant-based diet is the way that I've gone and uh, it's amazing a lot of support that I've gotten from other people out there in the triathlon community that are also plant-based and um, that's been the medicine for me that's really made the big difference. Finally, four years after his world title win, Jacobs has discovered he does have more Hawaii's in him and more goals to achieve and he wants the crown back. For him starting tomorrow is a win. So I really don't care what happens tomorrow because he's here doing what he loves. He's happiest when he's racing and he's racing against the best in the world tomorrow. So it's a win. I think it's a win for everyone. And so after a huge build up, Jacob's prepared to put it all on the line and face his demons at the start of the prestigious Asia Pacific Ironman Championships in Cairns. While it wasn't the perfect race, Jacobs did enough to prove to himself and the world that he's far from a spent force, finishing in a very respectable third position. I wanted to prove to myself that better health and better training would result in a better performance, that there wasn't something else in the puzzle. And you know, I made it, I made it, I had some really good, good times out there, really positive sections, some terrible sections, but... As a former world champ, do you feel the weight of expectation now every time you race? No, not really, because, um, you know, the support's there, no matter how I'm doing it. Uh, the, uh, the age group itself, you know, they're incredible. Excuse me. Um, you know, they are. Uh, they give me a lot of support. Um, you know, they don't question it. They just are there, good or bad. They're there, cheering me on. And and especially, you know, just to see me finishing third, they were just, you know, so wrapped for me. It's a tough sport, isn't it? Oh yeah. Uh, really tough, the ups and downs, you know, it's your life, it's, your, it's not just your career, it's your, it's every minute of every day, you rely on some feedback, some, some uh, happiness from your training and, and, and but more so the results because, you know, the results are your income and the income is the ability to live a, a nice, uh, a happy life, it's a tough life for anybody to be a professional athlete, you have to give up everything.